Welcome viewers, I have made it down to Cardamina, Kos, Greece, I think that's how you pronounce it, but we did have a bad start and I'm not sure I can recommend this, I'll let you know what I'm talking about in a wee minute, remember I was in Turkey a few days ago and I came over on the ferry, if you missed the live last night let me tell you all about it, I could have went to Scotland quicker, um, it's really nice here, what a day. 34 degrees, temperature check. 34 degrees viewers, people swimming in the sea. We've got this wee beach club here, um, which I think is exclusive. Maybe if you're staying in here, I'm not sure if you just go and buy a drink. Called Nissia Boutique Hotel. So it looks absolutely class, doesn't it? Look at the views here, it's amazing. I've not been all the way around there. I'm going to walk up there later on. I'll see if there's anything else there. I've just literally arrived in the resort and I've checked in to my accommodation. Uh, about the cheapest apartments in this resort and they were not cheap, we'll talk about that in another video. It's quite expensive this resort. Um, and some of the accommodations remind me of some of the places I stayed in, in Ayanapa, from the 1960s and 70s. Uh, and they're not even that cheap. At least the one I booked in Ayanapa was like 17 pound a night. It's a lot more than that here. But I tell you something, it's really nice here. Um, these restaurants will get busy obviously later on at night. A bit early now, this is getting filmed. It's about half five, so technically it is night time almost, isn't it? Late afternoon, night time. I'll put this on the vid, uh, channel tonight, hopefully. If there's not any hiccups. Um, so you'll, you'll see these bars here are quite quiet. But further up, just in the second back street, if anybody who's been to this resort will know the bars. Um, the really famous bars are here, Crossroads, and other ones. Sports bars are jam-packed because the football's on just now. And um, When I say I've just arrived, I've actually been here a wee while because, unfortunately, I watched the St Martin Celtic game. I arrived just in time for that. Um, nice bar I was in, bar 1960, just up at the top here, I don't know if we'll get to it in this one, it's a nice wee spot isn't it? €3.50 for a beer in some of these bars, I've seen them advertising it, half hour all night, cocktails, €6, Euros. as much as a large beer here, yeah 3 50 in this one as well, some lovely places here, as I say they're not busy just now, but don't be fooled, this resort's actually quite busy, oh, breakfast €6, Euros, not bad. Till three o'clock, noted for tomorrow morning, maybe. Um, yeah, further up, at bar 1960, there's a, there's a very well-known bar next door to that. You might see that in another video. I'll keep you in suspense. It reminds me of my childhood, that's all I can say. One of the best bands growing up. Calypso Cafe and Cocktail Bar, so really nice spot here. Um, some of the wee sports bars down the side streets here are cracking. Um, they're Get four, five, six TVs showing all the Premiership games, and uh, it took me about forty minutes to get here on the bus. Maybe forty-five minutes, three euros eighty. But let me tell you how I got here in the first place. Remember, I was in Bodrum. Uh, quite a lot of people have left me a message saying, "Kevin, we're coming to Bodrum. We're thinking of doing this day trip over to Kos, and vice versa. We're in Kos, and we're thinking about doing the day trip um, over to Bodrum. There is cocktails and dreams." Tom Cruise fans. 350 for a large beer as well. Let's see how much a vodka mix is. Five euros, glass of wine, 350. Prices are not too bad here. As I said, it will get busy later on at night, I'm sure. Um, you're going to see a lot more of the busy bars on other videos as well. I'm just doing a quick one because I'm actually going to watch the end of the other football games and then I'm going to watch the Liverpool game uh, coming on as well. So I'm taking a wee break from filming today. I'm pretty exhausted from the last few days, to be fair. Anyway. I digress. Nice wee place in there, wee restaurant, Romano. So, I got the ferry over, it was 24 euros, and I supposedly booked the quickest ferry. I just went into one of the offices at the ferry port. There will be a video on this coming soon, but I need to edit it, so that'll wait till I get back to Scotland. Um, and basically, the ferry, you've got to check in an hour before. So for example, my ferry I booked was half past eight in the morning, so I had to be at the ferry port at half seven. The queue's massive to check in, right? There's no shade hardly, and it's still at half seven. It's still really, really um, hot. There's a wee Chinese and sushi place there. Don't know what I'm gonna have tonight. I have a steak, a bit of something Greek. We'll wait and see. Um, yeah, so I had to check in, basically, an hour before. Then we got on the ferry at half eight, and it was a really old uh, ferry. I think it was called Sea Star. It was funny, because when I booked it, the guy at first, I says, uh, what company am I with? And he says, Seastar. And I thought he was saying sister, but it's Seastar. 
so it was a really really old boat and uh, got on the boat 45 minutes later the boat hadn't left then there was an announcement obviously in Turkish which I didn't understand but I did understand everybody got up picked their bags up and then started leaving uh, I'll do a video probably at night one time here to show you the contrast how busy it is at night I will be busy I'm sure at night um, so what basically happened is the ferry broke down viewers right <laughs> the ferry broke down but they moved us on to another ferry next to it so we were on the other ferry next to it and it was jam packed the other ferry, right? obviously there was more people going on another ferry after it so we were doubling up so then we were on the ferry this ferry that was supposed to take half an hour ended up taking nearly an hour nice wee Italians there looking at them doing the flame cooking in the back um, yeah it took an hour there's Ted's or is it Tio's? I think it's Tio's that's my site sorry yeah so the ferry took an hour but before we actually bo uh, got to the port in Cost Town they announced basically that they were over capacity at Stelios place cafe bar they were over capacity for the ferry so we had to basically wait in the ferry because there wasn't enough room to go through passport control so we waited in the ferry another 20 minutes they let some people off who had bags and were going on other ferries and then we had to queue in a big massive long queue at passport control get into Bodrum passport control eh, sorry get into ro roads not roads costs I mean costs I get mixed up with all these places I've been <laughs> we had to wait in a big queue at passport control in Cost, Cost Town and uh, passport control just in case you don't know is a hut and there was four people stamping passports and there was hundreds of people waiting there was elderly people there was people in buggies babies and there was people waiting in over 30 degrees with no shade for ages ages so basically what happened is check the boats here what happened is eventually I clocked it when I actually arrived there's a bar I was watching the football in bar 1960 when I actually arrived I arrived at 22 minutes past 11 and I checked in at half past 7 it took nearly 4 hours compare that to, look at the difference that's because we're moving countries right plus obviously the ferry broke down that was just unfortunate let's take the difference Lanzarote to Fortaventura to Correco it's like half an hour and then you're there There's, it's so simple you just turn up right before the boat goes and go on it so I don't know if I would recommend the day trip to Kos and to uh, to Bodrum because it's such a hassle even take away the 45 minutes on the ferry let's even say an hour it's still going to take you about 3 hours maybe to get across it might have just been unusual but I did see some reviews online um, basically saying they had the same problems so lovely wee bars up here as well uh, I forgot to say did I say women ordered a pina colada in bar 1916 I heard her saying to the staff and she left that's one of the best cocktails I've ever had um, it, it did look amazing to be fair so let me know if you've had a cocktail in there so yeah I'm not, going to sh I'm not sure I can recommend it viewers because I took up my whole morning going on that damn ferry and it's so avoidable they have to build a bigger passport control at Cost Town not just a wee hut and they have to build shade for people when they have to wait in queues I mean they had more than, more than an hour's notice knowing this ferry obviously had been delayed and we had to move on to another ferry so they knew people were coming I don't even know why they couldn't employ more staff just on standby and the ironic thing is when you get there there's three or four people in security just standing about doing nothing they could be, they could be starting passports but there's only two windows in the hut so it's actually impossible for them probably to do it as well it's such a bad system they need to improve it I don't understand why in this day and age they've not realised it needs to be improved every Sunday music 80s and the 90s is it live music? don't know I've yet to see if there's going to be live music around about here as well but more bars and cafes up here hold on to try and find some shade viewers very very hot I'm going up the wee side streets I'm going to one of the sports bars to watch football and uh, maybe do a few videos tonight as well fingers crossed for Liverpool fingers crossed it's been a bad day so far with St Murn getting beat eh I know Celtic fans you'll say that you deserve to win you did I mean St Murn played off the park to be fair uh, first goal goalkeeper should have saved that second goal was a great finish wasn't it but um, more bars and restaurants beautiful here as well so first impressions this resort I quite like it um, I've not been around every bit yet we'll wait and see but I'm very very reluctant to recommend the day trip from 
Bodrum to Kos and vice versa because if you get stuck on a ferry and you have to wait in the passport queue then yeah if you get stuck on the ferry and you have to wait in the passport queue you're going to be waiting a long long time a long time um, and, and soaring heat no shade I don't really know why they're not improving it. They just have to build a wee additional shelter with shade or knock the hut down and build a bigger passport control office. It's, it's crazy, honestly. Let me know, anybody done the opposite one, going from Kos to Bodrum, is it just as bad in the way there? So, things could be easier. First world problems really, isn't it? But I thought I'd warn you, if you're coming here, you're thinking of doing the day trip, if you're definitely elderly, mobility problems, or you've got young children with you, I would think twice about this trip because you could be stuck outside in the sun for ages waiting to get your passport stamped when you get there. Anyway viewers, I'm away for a beer, come on the pool and we'll catch you in the next one. Don't forget new viewers, hit the wee subscribe button, it's absolutely free. We've got lots more videos coming from Turkey and from Kos. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the one in Bar Street last night. I was waffling a wee bit at the end because I was trying to speak over the loud music not to get copyright strike. In case you're wondering why I was repeating myself, because I did watch some of it back. Uh, thanks for everybody who joined me in the live. The girls were fantastic in that restaurant. Get on the violin, get on the guitar. There's a wee chat with them at the end that says, You are amazing. Keep up the good work. They were absolutely fantastic. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one.